morning everyone and welcome back to the Runpreneur blog where we discuss all things entrepreneurship and running. It's a brutally cold morning, it's minus six degrees, it's running on ice today, uh, hands and feet are pretty numb so horrible running conditions but I'm still doing it so there we go. And it's Sunday run day where we discuss all things running and today's topic is the uh, physical and mental benefits of long distance running training. So as always if you like this episode please give it a like and a subscribe and let's get started. So the dreaded long run session uh, to new runners in particular when you start trying to get into running on a more kind of I wouldn't say serious level but a, a more significant level uh, would be appropriate is the long run session is is the one that some people love some people hate and uh, but it does give you so many benefits and um, it's really important you understand them to try and incorporate into your running training um, firstly if we understand the different types of kind of running training there's, there's kind of four main ones there's kind of your lactate threshold which is kind of some people refer to it as, as tempo runs there's your morning there's your your kind of long distance runs which is where you're focusing on kind of running efficiency you know heart rate control that side of things there's vo2 max or your kind of interval training where you're pushing your heart to the to the max to kind of get the speed work in and there's also kind of hill running which is a great way of putting resistance training and improving your kind of running form and endurance under stress so that's the the kind of four main types of running and long running will generally take up a significant proportion of your training plan um, you, you look at a lot of the kind of top level athletes and uh, just going to pass someone morning you, go, you look at some kind of top level athletes and they and they will do the vast majority of their training in the kind of long distance setting low heart rate you know slow plodding miles because what you're doing is you're building your running running efficiency and ultimately to be the best runner you need to be the most efficient runner you can be and uh, and that's where the kind of long distance training stuff comes to the to the forefront um, i talk i've talked in different episodes about the maximum aerobic function i train to heart rate and uh, if you understand the concept of maximum aerobic function it's, it's the the heart rate the exact heart rate that you transition from burning fat as a usable energy supply into build, into burning carbohydrate and uh, my, I know mine is about 145 beats per minute if I stay under 145 beats per minute I'm 136 at the moment then I am uh, I'm burning fat as an energy supply and uh, the reason it's so important for kind of endurance athletes is that even the skinniest of people have got about 77,000 calories of fat stores in their body that's a lot of energy and now if your your body can learn to use that energy supply as much as possible before dipping in and out of the carbs then you can go on for a lot longer so technically you would, should never run out of energy never hit the wall it's not as simple as that because you get like muscle fatigue and lag which then elevates your heart rate just from the kind of muscle fatigue side of things so it's really hard to keep under math for so long but what you'll find is that by doing more of it you'll, you'll become more efficient i mean i started running kind of at my math level when i started doing it i was about nine minute mile uh, maybe five five minute 40k kind of pace so that's how i was to stay under math i can now run at kind of eight almost eight minute five minute k maybe slightly under that and still stay within my math zone so just by doing it more and more often your body gets more efficient and more quicker at running at that level and that's where the endurance training can kind of really improve your uh, kind of endurance skills so you know not it's not just about the kind of physical benefits as well i mean obviously if you're training for long distance stuff and if that's part of your your uh, your plan then uh, the long distance training is going to be a, a really important part of it to build up your stamina and endurance to do those long distance events but i also find that they can often be the most enjoyable you know it's no fun you know busting yourself to kind of do a, a 5k where you're almost sick at the end of it you know where you run on the, on the long distance stuff you can run for a couple of hours quite comfortably and when you get when you practice for a while and trained and you can do it with a kind of a really kind of relaxed pace 
you can listen to some music, listen to some audio books, all these things that can actually make the experience more enjoyable and feel like less, less of a chore, which is uh, super, super important. So I think that's really, really something to kind of make it more enjoyable. And also, you know, it's easier to distract yourself on the longer runs because if somebody said, I'll go and run for two hours, and you think, oh God, that's a horrendous. But if you, if you run for two hours and you listen to like the podcasts or, or audio books or music, or you're running with somebody else having a chat, it's quite, it's quite, it takes your mind off the actual work you're doing and you can kind of churn out the miles subconsciously. A prime example is I'm uh, 12K into a run at the moment. I didn't know how long I was planning on doing it. I've just started my vlog because we did a, club ha- a clubhouse room. If you're not familiar with clubhouse, it's like a, a live kind of audio stream where people could jump into rooms and you can discuss things as a topic between groups. It's kind of a big social platform. It's only released on iOS at the moment, but it's kind of taken off. And uh, we just thought we'd do one this morning with me and my business partner. And we had like 11 or 12 people in, which is, uh, which is pretty cool. Morning. And uh, so we did that live and that, was, that went on for about 45 minutes. So, um, so yeah, so, so 45 minutes into a run and, well, a bit longer than that, one hour and 10 now into the, into the run. And, uh, I'm kind of over 12k into it and I haven't really noticed myself doing that distance because I've been so distracted and that's uh that's the beauty of doing of getting your long miles in with distractions but the I think the real benefit I mean I talk about running a lot and for me I get more mentally from running than I do physically now obviously I'm churning out the miles and going for all sorts of challenges and crazy stuff like that but I do find that I get far more from a, from, a, from a mental perspective. And what I mean by that is that, I, I, many of you will be aware, obviously watching this, I'm on a challenge to run every day for a year, to do at least 5K. I normally do at least 10 at the weekends, on Saturdays and Sundays. And um, the, I then ch- changed the challenge up to do this vlog at the same time. And um, I get so much benefit from this. It's been game changing for me, from, uh, from a, a lifestyle perspective. My demeanor, my mind, my ability to, kind of process the emotions of stress, overwhelm, anxiety that so many of us experience every day, whether it's job related, family related, and I find it's this amazing release mechanism to kind of process all this stuff, clear my head and, and switch my mood that can often be negative into a very positive one. And that's what these long running sessions do for me. And I think the short start stuff can do it as well, but I just find it is sometimes it's difficult to think and process stuff on the short shaft stuff or the stuff that you're working a bit harder. Whereas when you do it on a a nice steady long run, I mean, my average pace isn't very quick at all. It's about five minutes, 45 kilometer pace. Um, So I'm not pushing it hard at all. I'm just caressing it so now I can obviously talk clearly. Very, very cold, so my face is a little bit numb. Fingers in particular are numb as well, my toes as well, so I run barefoot style. So, um, but the clarity and the focus and the kind of decompression of the pressure that I kind of get from doing this is, is the real main benefit that I find. So um, that's actually a shorter episode than I thought it was going to be. Uh, but let's go back to the physical stuff just before I kind of draw this to a, to a summary. Um, yeah, if, you, if, you, if you're doing running, I, I suppose I'd classify a 10k or more as a long run. Um, anything under that, I wouldn't, I wouldn't really classify as, as long. It's all relevant to the standard you're at. You might find that for some people, 5k is a, a long run. But um, I think when I'm talking about some of the really physical benefits, I think you generally get those more so on the longer distance stuff, so 10k plus. So that's what I'm kind of referring to here. And the training, you know, it's just, it's, it's an easy, an easy way to train. I think the biggest problem that people get is, uh, is that they, they often want to push themselves and improve so quickly. And in actual fact, the running, the slower stuff, the longer distance stuff is where you improve significantly more. And a lot of people don't, don't realize that because a lot of people, you know, you're looking at, at running, what you're trying to achieve. And the main goal of, of running long, longer distances is to improve your running efficiency and endurance levels, ultimately. And uh, there's a period in your heart rate zone between your math, where you're, you're running at, uh, in your fat burning zone, where you're improving your running efficiency, and your kind of, um, you know, uh, lactate threshold, which for me is about 165, 167. So there's 20 beats per minute there 
between 145 and 165 where I'm getting no physiological benefit of running other than calorie burn. Now if you're trying to lose weight or burn calories then again you're doing that but if you want to improve as a runner there's four different running sessions I talked about you know kind of VO2 max the kind of hill or interval repeats lactate threshold or your tempo runs and your long distance or your endurance your map zone type runs each one of those is improving a key part of your running phys- physiology and see I'm, I'm, I'm slowing my words now I'm so cold Physiolo- physiologia I can't even say it you know what I mean uh, but um, yeah I'm trying to, you're benefiting and improving as a runner when you're identifying that you're running in one of those those, those four key sections and if you look at people like Mo Farah and uh, some of the pro athletes they do 80% of their work is low paced I mean for them you know he'll 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 run quite frequently really slow stuff like for him like eight minute mile pace is super slow obviously and he'll do a lot of miles churning that out or or slightly quicker Um, but a lot of the the top endurance athletes that's what makes up a large proportion of their training churning out the miles building that efficiency so being as quick as you can in your fat burning zones and uh, I mean you look at iron men who do you know crazy endurance that they do it because they've conditioned themselves to do it in their math zones so that they can kind of do that level of endurance obviously you have to top up your energy supplies but they're, they're predominantly using their fat supplies as an energy source which is so so powerful you know if you if you rely on your carbs you might get up to 10 miles before you start d- 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 diminishing before you need to obviously refuel and when you feel that that need to refuel it's too late but with fat if you know you've got 77,000 calories I don't know anybody who could run 77,000 calories worth of energy in one go uh, so you should never run out if you condition yourself to run in that zone so uh, I'm going to leave it there so I avoid waffling and repeating myself um, but to summarise the benefits for me for, for long distance running is my favourite running type it's the type I do nearly all the time and uh, the, phys- the, the, the physical benefits are you know you're improving your running efficiency if you want to get better as a runner it's all about being better or quicker or improved at, 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 in the most efficient way and the way you improve your efficiency is do your longer endurance runs and keep your heart rate lower so really, really important there to, to understand the physical benefits um, obviously the physical benefits of losing weight calorie burn a healthy lifestyle all these types of things that you get but I think for me the real benefits come from a mental perspective where the positivity the positive endorphins that running and exercise promote can change your demeanor your mood it can give you an outlet or a release mechanism to process the stresses overwhelm and anxiety that we all have in our lives in some capacity and too many of us don't have a release mechanism if you don't have a release mechanism pressure builds and builds and builds and it's like a pressure in a pipe it can burst and that's where people kind of have mental breakdowns so I think running can keep you grounded or uh, certainly the longer distance stuff is a really really great release mechanism you can also use it to kind of multitask you can always do it on autopilot you can chat with people when you're running you can uh, listen to audio books or music and learn stuff while you're running some people learn languages and stuff some people learn about business listen to podcasts you know I did a, a clubhouse room this morning where we were hosting a, a room communicating with people about entrepreneurial stress overwhelm and anxiety and how you can overcome it with exercise and uh, you know there's quite a few people in there which is cool and I was doing that while I was running so it's amazing what you can kind of multitask by doing it um, but the mental benefits are almost endless and they're going to be very p- personal to you but I would say that I get 80% benefit from running from a mental perspective 20% from a physical but um, I would be a very very different person a, a lot less productive um, I would never be as, as far down the road on my entrepreneurial journey that I am today without it and uh, it has been life-changing for me from a kind of personal uh, personality and and positivity perspective also so that's pretty much it for me today as always if you've got any questions just drop me a comment I'll respond to everyone if it's a bigger question I'll, uh, I'll, I'll possibly do another vlog episode and tag you in if it's not relevant to you no problem just unfollow you don't have to unfriend you can just unfollow and it'll stop clustering up your social feeds but before you go do check out the Rumpreneur YouTube channel as I do a different topic on every day of the week and I think um, just because today's topic might not be relevant 
some of the other days may be super relevant and it's all catalogued nice and neatly by playlist so you can uh, dip in and out as a free resource on an ongoing basis uh, check out the links in my bios as well where i'm starting to produce some free resources that accompany the vlog uh, the first one being my 70 step process to repurposing reformatting and optimizing your social media content across all platforms so if you do want to get more social media content out there and uh, you don't know how to do it or you want to do it in a more efficient way check out that checklist and hopefully it'll be helpful completely free and uh, yeah all it's left to say is the the Rumpreneur blog was set up to help entrepreneurs and uh, business owners overcome the uh, emotions of stress anxiety and overwhelm um, by using exercise as a release mechanism um, to kind of manage and control those emotions that we we all experience in some capacity and it's often the difference between success and failure on how well that person deals with these emotions the ones that do it well have a release mechanism they can process things accordingly which allows them to keep clarity focus and stay in control and move on to bigger and better things in their lives other people just bottle it up and uh, and the pressure builds and builds and builds of stress stress builds and turns into overwhelm the overwhelm builds and turns into anxiety and then you can get kind of mental health related issues and breakdowns and things and normally one or two things happens when you get to that stage the entrepreneur has a breakdown or the business has a breakdown and unfortunately either or is often terminal to the likelihood of your business lasting the test of time now i'm so passionate about this because i've been there i've lost multiple businesses so i'm running through ice here. i've lost multiple businesses because of this um, i've also lost multiple business partners because of this and i've almost been bankrupt because of my inability to deal with these pressures of entrepreneurship and it's a really, really dark place and uh, it's only really since I've kind of integrated this vlog and this running schedule into my, my life that things have started to really turn around for me. And as a result, I've made more progress in the last you know, six months than I have in the previous three years. And uh, as a result, I've got more businesses, I've got more exciting things happening in my life than ever before. I'm, uh, I'm really on, a, on the right path now. And it's not a coincidence, it coincides with, with using running as a mechanism to kind of control and manage this. So I'm super passionate about this. And my pledge to you is that if you are one of these entrepreneurs that are struggling with these emotions and you need some help, just drop me a message. And uh, there's no catch here whatsoever. I'm not selling anything or anything. I'm so passionate about helping people on this topic because I know how life-changing it's been for me. So if you are one of these people, drop me a message. We'll jump on a call. No obligation, no sale, no nothing. Just want to give you a helping hand and help you avoid the stuff that I've been through that I wouldn't wish upon my worst enemy. So that's it for me today. As always, if uh, you like this episode, give it a like, comment and a subscribe. If you want to see similar content, check out the playlist link on my YouTube channel. And all that's left to say is, as always, stay positive, stay happy, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.